everyone. Welcome to Paul Painting with Ron. I hope you've all been well in the past week. I'm keen today to share another painting with you. Um, I haven't shown many um, Dutch pours on my channel yet. In, in fact, I think I've only done, done one. So I'm going to have another go at a Dutch pour today, um, varying a few things that I did in the last one that I didn't particularly like, how they worked for me. So we'll see how it works today. But anyway, today I'm going to be doing my painting on this um, 40 by 50 centimeter thin edge canvas. Now I've made sure it's nice and tight. And as usual, I've prepared the back by putting some painter's tape around and hammering in some giant push pins that I got from my um, local office supply store. Now, I, I do like to use Amsterdam paints for Dutch pours, uh, but they're expensive and they're hard to get here in Australia. So for my background colours, rather than using heaps of the Amsterdam paint, I'm just going to be using Montmartre colours for my background today. But the colours for the actual pour are going to be Amsterdam colours. We'll see how that's going to work. Now last time, if you saw my last video, and I'll put a link to that at the end of this one, I used um, some flow troll as well as water to thin out the paint. Um, but today I'm just going to be using water to see how that goes. All right, so for my background today, I'm going to use um, white and black on the canvas, just to try it out. Um, so I'm using Montmartre white and Montmartre um, lamp black. Now, um, I used about 170 grams of paint, and I think I ended up using about 80 grams of water in the end, but I'll show you the consistency in a little bit. I just kept adding it until I got the consistency that I wanted. Now, the Amsterdam colours today, I'm keeping it simple. I'm using some, what's this one, um, Napthol Deep Red. And this one is um, Azo Orange, which should look nice together. Now, I was tempted to put maybe some yellow in it as well, but yellow and black don't sometimes play well together. They make a yucky green colour. So I'm just sticking to the red and orange today. If I do it again, I might try some, some gold perhaps in there to see how that works. But keep it simple today. So I use 20 grams of each colour and I used about, oh, how much did I have? About 10, 15 grams of water in the end to get a nice thin consistency. So as I said, I'll show you that in, in a little bit. So that's all I'm using today, the paint and the water. And to blow it out today, I'm going to be using just a standard blow dryer that I bought at Kmart, a nice cheap one. We'll see how that goes today. All right, so let's get started. Right, we're back. So these are the paints I've mixed up today. So as you can see, you don't need much colour. Mostly it's the background colour that I've got here. If you can see, I've made it really thin. So if I pour it off the spoon, it doesn't leave a mound. And if I do a little twirly thing with the, the paint, it doesn't leave a mound either. So it's not as thin as water. I didn't want to make it overly thin because too much water can break bonds in the paint. But if it's too thick, you're not going to be able to blow out your paint using the blow dryer. Right, so we'll see how that goes today. And I've kept the, the colours the same consistency today. So we shall see. So I'll just move the paints aside. and bring in my canvas. Hopefully you can see that. Just move this puppy pedal pad a bit. There we go. Right, now I'm going to do half white, half black. I've never tried this before, so we'll see how we go. Now, when I've used one color, I've just spread out the paint by tilting it, but you can't really do that when you're using multiple colours. I've seen some people use a blow dryer to blow out the paint to cover their canvas, but I'm just going to use a palette knife today to spread it out. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so I'm just going to start with, what colour will I do first? Perhaps the white. 
Now I do I don't want to do it like exactly half half. So I might uh, go down the side a little bit here and and finish there and go like that. So I'll put white up here and black down there. But you'll see what I mean in a bit. As you can see, it's pretty thin. Hopefully not too thin. I may keep a, a little bit in my cup for an emergency. You never know what emergency I may get. I don't have too much paint, but if I do, I know what to do next time. I'll just pop bubbles. Now with the colour, I'll put it on that dividing line between the black and the white. All right, I'll put the red on first. This is the scary bit. some grey when we blow it out and then we'll put in the orange I'll just put a wiggle wiggle pattern for the sake of it now I hope that's enough Maybe slightly more. Okay. All right. Now my blow dryer. Whichever one you get, make sure it has like a cool button on it to keep the temperature cool or as cool as possible for a hair dryer. And I've got it on the lowest heat setting. And I'll start off by using a low a low fan. Press the cool button. Oh, scary. Now, which way will I go? I might go... Okay. Don't have to go fast. interesting now you don't want to blow dry it too much because you'll just end up with mud so if you can do it just once that's the ideal 
um, and then go do the rest with a straw or with your mouth. All right, let's have a look. Okay. some interesting lacing happening. Wonder if that's the, the Montmartre. green which is awesome <gasps> all right now what will I do up there that I've got a lot more happening up there than I do down there I don't know why Okay, cool. I had too much black on the canvas. So next time I'll use less black. Okay, the white has certainly created lots of lacing. So it may be a Montmartre thing or an Amsterdam thing. Not sure. I'll just give it a bit of a torch. dry flat so I'll be interesting interested to see what it looks like dried 
But when I do it again next time, I'll use less, a bit less of the white, a bit less of the black, and maybe a bit more colour, just to see, see what happens. Probably a little too much lacing happening, but nothing I can do about that now. But anyway, I'll bring you in for a closer look. Okay, so this is the painting. Um, it's certainly interesting. I've got some interest, interesting lacing happening. I do somehow think the Montmartre and the Amsterdam reacted with each other because I certainly got way too much lacing in my painting. So next time I do it, I think I will use all Amsterdam paints just to see if it makes any difference. But I'll see how it dries. But it certainly looks interesting, especially from a distance. Well, what do you know? I forgot to press the record button when I filmed the ending of my video and I only discovered that a few days later when I went to edit it. Hence the different clothes, the different look today. But anyway, um, I thought the, um, the painting turned out interesting um, and I did notice, I think I said it in the video, but if not, I did notice that I got an extraordinarily um, large amount of lacing happening in the paint. It just didn't stay together. It spread out into lacing, probably more than I was was planning for. And I had wondered what had, had caused that. Uh, now, I did a painting just before. I, I won't show you because it, it's a bit yucky. But just to find out um, if it was um, the brands of paint that I used that caused that lacing. And I think it did. I used the Montmartre for the, the base layer and the Amsterdam for the top layer. And I think those two brands um, reacted together to cause the lacing effect. Because in this new painting that I did, I didn't get the lacing and I used just Amsterdam paints. All right, but if the lacing effect is what you're going for, by all means use a combination of um, um, Montmartre colors for your base color and Amsterdam for your top colors. Now in the meantime, the painting that I did has dried. And I do think it turned out quite well. I, I do quite like it, actually. It gives um, an interesting effect. If you can see all this, this lacing here. I'll just bring it a bit closer to the camera. So perhaps you can, you can see that, all the lacing happening there. So as you can see, the paint didn't stay together when I blew it out with the blow dryer. It just spread and then it all separated into the, the lacing effects. Except for where it was particularly thick, it didn't do that. But everywhere else it broke up into that, that lacing. So I think it turned out quite interesting. Not what I was going for, but I think it's interesting. And I'll, I'll certainly play around with that technique a little bit more. A bit different to the standard... Um, Dutch pour. Yes, I won't show you this new one. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video today and you've been inspired to give the technique a go. There's certainly some things I still want to play around with and practice with to, to get the looks that I, I'm really after. But I hope I've given you some ideas. If you did like what you see today, please press the like button. And if you'd like to see more of my content, please take a moment to subscribe. So I hope you have a good week ahead and stay well. Happy painting and we'll see you again next time.